Welcome to Rediscovering American New England, sponsored by Labatt Blue Light. As you can see behind me, we have the Mayflower. Oh, fuck. Fuck Falmouth High School, fuck the whole faculty, fuck every teacher, whoever tried to battle me. Sneaking out, smoking bowls, coming back, roasting. I'm 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 what are we doing, boys? I said the pilgrims. You said the pilgrims? Yes, we're dressing as pilgrims. We're in Plymouth. I thought you meant pill head. Pill heads. You shortened you, it in the group chat. You said pilly. Pilly. Yes. Why I, would we assume pilgrims? That's not a slang because term. Because we're going to be in Plymouth Plantation where the pilgrims arrived. We got Plymouth Rock 20 feet away from us. You look ridiculous. Do you want us to change? No, no, it's fine. I, pill head works. Seeing as we'd be filming this episode of Rediscovering America over the 4th of July, we knew we'd have to go to New England. He's not even dressed like me. This costume's a scam. To rediscover our nation's origins. And while the country wasn't born until 1776, many people would say the sperm that would fertilize the egg of our nation was first ejaculated in 1620 when the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock. Which has since become one of our country's most renowned, culturally significant, and memorable tourist attractions. Kind of underwhelming. There's like eight bigger rocks yeah. that they had to walk past. Just a, a standard size rock. It was a hundred years after the Pilgrim planted that they just picked a rock and said, yeah, that was the one. There are more people looking at you than the rock. Yeah, people are just fixated on your stupid ass costume. I kind of fit in. With okay. What? With the historical vibes, you guys look like you belong in Wound Socket. Let's go to Wound Socket. That would actually yeah. be more exciting. Change. Please. Life feels so good, so good now that you're here. While most people wouldn't so consider Woonsocket, so Rhode Island a must-see New England destination, internet user Vanilla32 once described it as a place that has an insane amount of pedophiles. Wow, imagine in Woonsocket. It holds a special place in our heart, as the first piece of content us three did together was a show called Virtual Vacations where we visited Woonsocket virtually using Google Maps Street View. Trends. Ooh, we got a camouflage Tom Brady jersey. People from Woonsocket wear that to go hunting for fentanyl. And oh boy, it sure was exciting being here in the flesh, seeing some of our favorite spots firsthand. We got a famous hot wiener. It's orange. It's an orange hot It's a hot dog's orange. It looks like a cooked carrot. All right, let's just get something notarized. It, this is also a notary. Where does it say that? Right above the yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the notary, who is also a line cook at Hot Wieners, wouldn't be in until the next day. Saturday morning? Okay. So with the 4th of July coming up, we decided to load up on fireworks instead. What'd you buy? Circus Dynamite, Blinkers, Shazams. What are Blinkers? Yeah, but what are they? You know what they are. What's Circus Dynamite? This will be 15 minutes of entertainment. That's a lucky me. It's a regional slang difference. And then what was the last one? Shazams. What do these do? Do we need any more? Oh, they have a whole fucking like factory. It's a warehouse in there. Donnie's got the fucking aloof walk going. It's yeah. Like he develops that gait towards the end of all of our trips. How about the run the ball? I don't know it. Donnie's been in there for about 20 minutes. It's way too long. I'm worried. I freaking lit it, and I don't know if I liked it or not. So I don't want to tell you one way or the other. Okay. Because my name is everything with me. I got the Finding Nemo. You just got the Nemo. That doesn't have the power of Circus Dynamite, the flair of Shazam's, or the spontaneity of Blinkers. What the hell did you get? The child. Well, they couldn't say the child, so it says the kid. After picking up some fireworks, it was time to head to Chan's. Chan's is one of our favorite places we visited on our virtual vacation to Woonsocket. Donnie, this just looks like any other Chinese restaurant. Ho oh, ho, no, no, no. This is Chan's, home of egg rolls, jazz, and blues. 
Yeah, no commas in sight. So yeah, that's a, a genre, a subgenre of jazz. And we were giddy to learn that Chan himself was willing to tell us more about his Egg Rolls Jazz Club. This is John Chan. I assume you are the Chan that it's named after? Don't know if that's true or not, but I am Chan. Okay. okay. All right. My parents uh, bought this restaurant back in 65. Oh, okay. Wow. And so we're the second family that owned it since 1905. Wow. So this restaurant has been here since over 100 years. So uh, yeah, it has to be probably one of the older Chinese restaurants in Rhode Island? Probably one of the oldest continuing operation. Chinese restaurant in the country. This is all of our first time in Moonsocket. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah Physically. Yeah. yeah. You know, often time a lot of people say I've never been to Moonsocket, I've never been to Chance. Yeah, would you say you're the premier tourist attraction in Moonsocket? Uh, we, we bring a lot of people in. For dinner we plan to have some egg rolls and yeah. listen to egg rolls jazz, yeah. but for lunch we had a hot wiener. Oh Did yeah. you ever grab those? Oh yeah, I had, I had tasted it before. It seems like this town likes to combine unique things like egg rolls and jazz and yes. hot wieners and it was a notary as yeah. well. Yeah, also uh, the French culture, they have the, you know, dynamite. And Circus dynamite. Yeah, they also yeah. have... Uh, yeah. They're just throwing two things together oh, right. everywhere. Yeah. town of fusions. <laughs> yeah. Woonsocket is indeed a town of fusions. And at Chan's, not only could you listen to egg rolls jazz, you could also sing egg rolls karaoke. Who's the DJ for the karaoke? Because we were actually wondering if we could sing one of our own songs at some point. Yeah, you can ask. I mean, okay. uh, I'm not, usually Rick, W-R-I-K, that's this, that's this gig. He might be here tonight too. I'm Rick with sure. a W? And Rick kindly gave us permission to use the Chance Karaoke Lounge as the venue for our first Gaze concert. Ladies and gentlemen, next up, we got Gaze. Come on up. Little applause. <laughs> Unfortunately though, Nick and KB got cold feet at the last minute, so I had to go up there all by my lonesome. We are a band of three, but uh, tonight I'm doing a solo performance, and our first performance. A little support would have been nice, but don't worry, I got this. Good luck with your solo good luck, song. Good luck, Donnie. Yeah, so Give it up a chance. Yeah! Woo! Woo! The oldest Chinese restaurant in the United States that has been open continuously. So let's give it up for oh, that. There we go. Yeah. Good job. I didn't even know that. This song is on Spotify because it came out a day ago. Oh, nice. So so he couldn't put it in the karaoke machine. So he downloaded Spotify. He's trying to help us out. Uh, we just have to change the input. And then it's gonna be gravy. And to make matters worse, Rick the DJ couldn't figure out how to play the song on Spotify. A cappella it. So I wouldn't even have a backup track for support. Song sucks ass. Do it acoustic. It's fine. I'll, I'm gonna do it acoustic. Okay, here it goes. One, two, three. You know I don't fuck with a sunset unless it's salmon. You feel me, girl? Oh, you will. Do you feel alive? Are you having fun? Yeah. Feel that you've arrived or you haven't come Yeah, Yeah, don't worry about me, baby. I ain't done yet. I crushed my verse, but once I had to sing Nick and KB's lines, things got ugly. What is happening? I have the wings of a dragon, but the sins of a man? Dragonfly sinner! I'm a dragonfly sinner, you're a dragonfly sinner, they're a dragonfly sinner, they're not dragonfly sinner at all. Salmon Sunset. Dragonfly Center. There we go! Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I think I got all the lyrics. No thanks to you guys. I just sang two thirds of the song for you. Gaze is not one, we are three. Three. Now tonight, you're only one. All right, let's give it up, give it up. Where are you guys from? Massachusetts? I'm done. I'm, I'm, done. I'm out of the band. <laughs> I think the band broke up. After only a month in existence, we were done you wouldn't be seeing any more gays in our videos. But we still had a travel show to make, so when our co-worker Pat offered to take us to a quintessential New England fishing village, we happily obliged. I got you covered, guy. You got the perfect village we're gonna go to, you're gonna love it. We're gonna go right across Cape Cod Bay. I could fuck with that. Is All this right. what you guys are wearing out to where we're going? Yeah, yeah. That'll be fine, right? This is what we're wearing. Take those shorts up, Queen. Let's go. What? To fuck? Here it goes, my first boat wave of the trip. 
Hey, how are you? Happy Fourth of July! Yeah! It's coming up! Now those are what we call lesbians. We pulled into Provincetown, a quaint Portuguese fishing village on the tip of Cape Cod, and upon coming ashore, checked out some of the shops that cater to the local seamen. What, what is that bait for? Hey, dude, you, you, you tie it on the rod. Who knows what's going to come off? It's for bass? For lance bass? <laughs> P-Town is indeed a fishing village. But what Pat failed to mention to KB and Nick is that it's also the gay mecca of New England. You've been coming for 35 years? 35 years. My mother thinks I'm a dentist in Detroit. And seeing as we were dressed like absolute dirtbags, we stood out, jarringly so. But thankfully, Pat was willing to give us a makeover. But I want to get you guys in some like authentic, like local gear. I want you to fit in. I want you to feel comfortable. I don't want people looking. I am the opposite of fitting in right now. Yeah, the whole point of this trip is to like immerse ourselves in the culture. So if we could, if we could get a little wardrobe change, that'd be nice. Just promise me whatever I put you in, you're gonna do it. I'll wear whatever you put us in. Okay, so let's go get some fucking clothes. We're gonna go shopping. Oh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. It wasn't pretty, but we finally looked and felt like we belonged, and it was time to party. We were having a gay old time, but unlike Pat, we hadn't just come to P-Town to troll for D on Company Dime. We were here to learn more about New England culture. So that night, I booked us tickets to see someone perform traditional sea shanties, which are songs sailors used to sing to help pass the time on long voyages. Welcome to the stage, your hostess, Shoten Spitfire, Paige Turner. outfit honey this is all cute here what is your name this evening no. wait what what is the name you're not gay are you no okay come here if you're gay you're wearing the wrong outfit look at that you're so little you're so tiny i got bms bigger than you look at all right do you play any instruments no no instruments at all no what do you do for a living um work for a Travel company. A travel company. Great. <laughs> We're thrilled to be on vacation this evening. And where's your favorite place you've ever traveled to? Sioux Falls, South Dakota. <laughs> okay, no more questions. Here we go. <laughs> this is a little kumbaya for the lesbians. I know you know this song, everybody. You're going to play the tambourine. It's a company all right? Just everything I see amazing. Not a Truth be told, I slipped the drag queen a couple bucks to bring KB on stage. Hopefully he'll think twice before abandoning his bandmate on stage next time. Thank you, Paige, for an incredible show. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> is that what you'd always do? Is that, it? that? No. Yeah. I just did it because it felt like bro -y. You were trying know. to relate that to it. Yeah, do we bro look bro -y to you? Yeah, I couldn't tell if you're gay, straight, all of the above. Like, we actually just 
came here to fish. Do you know any good spots to catch some stripers? Go fish? I don't know. Well, maybe my okay. hotel room upstairs, but. I, I had something. told them it was all a sea shanty show. Mm -hmm. Apparently not. Uh -huh. Yeah, you sang along to like penis songs and stuff. And we did. That was, uh, yeah. It was catchy. I was in total awe of the very first penis I saw. You had a slideshow about, uh, you were talking about tops and bottoms. This is the insatiable go harder power bottom, everybody. Uh, tops we know is a Jewish toy. Um, bottoms, what is, what, what's the, Well, bottom is not just gay, really. That's the one who likes having his hair pulled while you choke him. And your buddy shoves his thick man meat down his dripping gullet. It's your preference in the bedroom, like you like to receive. I mean, I would consider myself a soft top. I don't know like that I Jeep, want a soft top. Like a, like no, a, like a Jeep Wrangler, you know? It's a, it's it's hard, but it's got the soft top. Oh, that you which means you're a little romantic? I'm a little romantic and I'm going to lie on top of you and I might be soft some of the times. Uh, you're cocaine. Cocaine, Lexapro. Cocaine. You're, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, uh, I'm a Jeep. Okay. I'm a Jeep. You're, you're a yeah. Jeep Wrangler. I'm a Jeep. Yeah. I'm actually a clown car. We can all fit inside and yeah. <laughs> drive off the cliff together. Oh? All? all of us. Here in the Polly Pockets, you know where to find me. Have you ever heard of the Provincetown Challenge? That's, no. That's what that? you... Town challenges you come here without a place to stay. And what the goal is is to find someone to sleep with so you have a place to stay. If you can't do that, you go to the Dick Dock. The Dick Dock is directly below us. Now, what you do there is you suck a dick or you get sucked, and that's the last resort to complete the P Town challenge. So, and Pat, you said if you can't find a place to stay, you go to the Dick Dock and suck. Does sucking get you a place to stay? It depends just... on how good you suck. Time, time will tell. What? That's the Provincetown Challenge? Yes. PTC. I thought that was picking someone in the audience and hoping they didn't bomb on stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Miami. I hated the fact that you picked me. If it makes you feel better, I will take you down to the dock and uh, P-Town was fun, but we're far deeper in the closet than Pat ever was. So we decided to continue our journey. Hi, right. later guys. And lock that closet door tight by doing the straightest activity possible, lobstering. Fellas, I'm sorry we didn't catch anything in P-Town. I, I did. Okay, well, I'm sorry we still haven't caught a living sea creature yet, but I promise you, today we're gonna pull something up because I called up my buddy, Captain Paul, Last summer, he taught me how to lobster. How are the traps looking, Paul? Yeah, he can handle it. And today, I get to teach you boys. So, you guys ready? Oh, yeah, it seems oh, easy. Yeah, so are. I'm gonna drive the boat, you guys are gonna do everything. Okay, right. okay. bait, band, I got skins, easy. gloves, boots. Right. And by the end of the day, you're gonna be the master bait. Let's yank some bugs. When Captain Paul said skins, he didn't mean like we're going <laughs> skins. He actually has like that's oil me. skins. I don't know if nudity is kosher in the lobster community. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is some real mass hole shit. It's breaking glass. That's gonna wash up on a children's beach. You look like a scumbag, and now I want you to lobster. Got some bugs over here, Corey. KB was a natural. Nick, however, was never able to find his sea legs. It's gonna throw up. I had like nine Charleston shoes in the car. It's too many Charleston shoes. And was constantly on the verge of blowing chunks all over the deck. Oh! I'm glad everybody's having fun. Hey, Kyle, can you take the pubes out of his claw? Thank you. Do you want to bait this one? Uh, yeah. Give it some slack. Oh, I don't have my can right now. Yeah. You? Yeah. That was just yesterday's cum. I wish I was back in the cubes, wasting away. Looking at a spreadsheet right now. I miss Excel. I miss Microsoft Excel. But despite being a man down, we were still able to pull up an impressive haul. And once our work was done for the day, we cruised into Menemsha Harbor in Martha's Vineyard for a trap to table feast. Oh, the fruits of our labor. 
Now, who wants a lobster for dinner? Me. All right. KB's down for one. No, that one's mine. No, it's Don't, mine. It's How is it yours? Because that was like I was I the just one took it with my hands. It's mine now. That's how things I called work. dibs back when we when we actually pulled that uh, up in the trap. I've never had lobster. I don't really know the intricacies of eating it. I'll pass. That was fun though today, right? I mean, you just tricked us into doing manual yeah, labor. You just did a, a shift of work. Not for nothing. Bad. We got t-shirts and now we get lobster dinners for free. Some kids go their whole lives without ever eating lobster. I've done that and I'm perfectly fine and adjusted. Just try one claw. All right, it's gonna change your life. Yeah, I don't want to. I can tell. One. I can do it. I can see it in your eyes. You're a claw crusher. No. Nope. Yeah, trying to get some vineyard badge. Where's Martha? I want to eat her pussy. All right, we got five. We're gonna need some more. Why? Well, I'm gonna take three to the dome. You're gonna eat three lobsters? Yeah, dude. It's not every day you get this shit for free. Corey paid thirty-six dollars for a lobster roll up in Maine a couple weeks ago. We're not True. getting them for free. We just worked five hours yeah. on a boat. They don't know it's the last day of their lives. I don't know when it's mine. I'm gonna kill myself. So we're at the Menemsha Fish Market. We ordered a bunch of non-lobster delicacies too. This place makes the best chowder on earth. But we also handed them a basket of lobsters. They're gonna steam up for us and we're gonna plow them on the boat down there. What's your mom's name? Why? Jonette. Uh, yeah. Jonette. I named my boat Jonette's Pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Saw it come it would be a tiny little boat. <laughs> you guys mind if I do the honors? You guys are making like an expensive delicacy look oh, disgusting. Me and KB are both on the verge of coming. I know. I and see KB both your hard dicks. Oh. oh, two more bites, I might leak a little bit. We then began the voyage back to the mainland. Making a quick pit stop to go hippo mode. Get up here, I don't want the stoolies roasting my penis. <laughs> Dude, it's too late for that. <laughs> they're already gonna, they're gonna destroy my dick. You know? This is a small angle for you. <laughs> Kyle well, can't, can't he can't swim. Oh yeah. shit! <laughs> He's just, all of our forefathers had to come across the oceans to settle here. So when you look at it, there's a little bit of merman and mermaid in every one of us. We are water people. For fence, for freedom, and for our forefathers! <laughs> um, are there any sharks around here? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Actually, they filmed Jaws, like, literally 50 feet that way. So, I'm gonna get out of the water with the fin. Yeah, you're dressed like a fish. At this point, we had seen far too much of Cape Cod. And it was time to ship up to Boston. That's where they tossed all the tea bags into the water. Where our fight for independence began. I feel like a new man, dude. We hopped on that water taxi. It was just gray. Now we step off and it is beautiful. Boston has come alive once again. Kind of like on the 4th, our country comes back alive. It's, it's reborn, it comes down those fallopian tubes and just comes out the vagina of liberty. Now Boston was a C-section yeah. because it, it fought to be born. That might be the, the deepest thing I've heard this whole trip. Boston's a C-section, go C's. Boston was indeed a C-section. And in order to learn more about our country's violent birth, we knew just the guy to talk to. So no trip to Boston is complete without a cameo from Rear Admiral. And he's about to take us into Warren Tavern, which I hear is pretty historical. Where it is, it's the oldest tavern in Boston. The likes of George Washington, Paul Revere, Sam Adams have all imbibed in here. And we're gonna do the same, get fueled up, because we are taking over Boston today, boys. There are gonna be absolutely no hoes in there. Yeah, where are the hoes? Where are the hoes? Dude, Lots Paul of Revere used to gas beers in that spot. Paul Revere, and you're Paul telling Revere me? had no okay, hoes. Paul Revere had the most hoes. Show, the hose. Hose. Show me the hoes then. When he oh. said the British are coming, the British are coming, he meant all the fucking British chicks. I've seen hoes, but then R.A. comes here and now there's nearly a hoe. Enough of the hoe talk. Have a little respect for the women in Boston here. Even if they don't have it for themselves, I'm going to have it for them. We're going to go in, 
Gas and Biz, Chucks and Nucks, and see Boston. R.A. regaled us with tales of Boston's rich history. That's the boss boy fell off, hit my head, and he had to call an ambulance on me, right over there. Then it was time to hit the streets. Right now we're walking up Monument Ave. A little Boston movie trivia for you, Nick. Monument Ave was a Dennis Leary film from uh, the late 90s. All right, when would I ever give a fuck about that? It's a cult classic Boston movie. I know no that's a rare thing. No one even remotely Wait, gives Monument a fuck Ave? about a cult classic. These Monument hicks are going to get fucked up when we're on the other side of the hill and my boys from the bricks come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, where's the, the boys bricks. from the bricks? Show me the boys where from the, the bricks, bricks and I'll bricks. run scared. Fuck those guys. It's called Monument Ave because there is a monument literally up the street. The Bunker Hill Monument, which by the way is older than the Washington Monument, suck on that PFT commenter, commemorates the Battle of Bunker Hill, which is on June 17th, 1775. Uh-oh. Yeah, my homie to sleep. Uh, homie sure. might want to stop shopping at the Beverly North Shore uh, Marshalls and buying his clothes. I am dressed like, the exact same as you. You guys look exactly alike. Except right. mine is ironic. If you're doing a road trip to the Cincinnati Bengals, you would buy this just because you know you're gonna puke on it and leave it in Cincinnati. But Nick would definitely pass for a city kid more than mm -hmm. more, more than KB would mm -hmm. right now. I look like I look like one of your brick boys. Rerad taught us about the Battle of Bunker Hill. What happened? I know a little bit. British come up this way. Uh, the Farmers and militia come up this way, and the British technically won the war, but their losses were so great that the revolutionary side realized, hey, we've got a beef here, we can win this. So, though they lost, the casualties on the British side were so much higher, and it gave like uh, ammunition, for lack of a better term, to the revolutionary side. It kind of showed the British, hey, the these fuckbags are actually putting up a fight. It's a classic case, Donnie, of uh, losing the battle but winning the war. But everybody who grew up here is ridiculously proud of it. And, and I gotta say, Donnie, to go to Barry Knight, no. Why do you like, keep singling Donnie out? Okay, you two hicks, what do you guys want to know? I want to be included. <laughs> this is where soldiers and militiamen died and farmers died yeah, in, yeah. in support of freedom. So it's uh, I never took it for granted. Then we had the pleasure of meeting one of his boys from the bricks in person. All right, now it's the Wonton Don here with the rear ad dad. Now I know in the movie, The Town, they hype this place up as like the bank robbery capital of the world. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Yeah. You, you didn't even think about that. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up with it. You know? I mean, it yeah. was just the nature of living in this town in the 50s and 60s. Just well, instinctively well, robbed the bank? Well, you know, it, it, was, it was like an every week thing. Like church? It was yeah. interesting to say the least. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a different era, 60s yeah. and 50s. Yeah, it was like legit yeah. gang wars going on and shit. But it's also a, a great community to grow up. I mean, it's, oh. you know, you, you don't find many people much more loyal than you do around here. And one of the folks that make Charlestown such a great place to grow up in is Rear Out's Uncle Mitch, who's been selling ice cream to tourists and townies alike for the last 20 years. This is a sliding scale ice cream truck. If you grew up in Charlestown, yeah. you get a townie discount. Okay. And then the next tourist walks Capital by, team. I charge, I double yeah. the price on the truck. <laughs> is that a bite mark? Yeah, my, I got my finger bit off once. By what? I got in a fight and this guy bit my finger off, so I sued. So the judge of the town, right? I used to date her daughter. And so I finally get to court. I'm supposed to get 10 grand. She makes her settlement and I get the letter in the mail. She said I was 33 and a third percent guilty. So she, instead of getting 10, I only got six. That's I just it. asked for a snow cone. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true you have a kid from someone you met at the ice cream truck? Yeah, yeah. he's 10 years old. I, he, not only that, he works on the truck now. That, I, so I had him and now I put him to work. What did she order that got her pregnant? A snow cone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're woozy. This tastes funny. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> Seeing Rerad connect with his family made me realize how much I missed my own. And thankfully, for once, they weren't too far away. So we made the 40 minute trek down to the South Shore to see what we could learn about our country from the member of my family who had lived in it the longest. You got a wonderful crew. Yeah. I've yeah. never, even wow. in my single days, I've never been surrounded by so many good looking young men. Yeah, most of us yeah. are handsome. Yeah. I feel important. You yeah. are, sure are. 102 years old. Yes, 102. Is she the oldest person you have met before? Physically, yes. Okay. We asked her about the secret to living such a long life. I smoked for a short time. Okay. I did eat a lot of anchovies. Nice. And we asked her about how the country has changed since she was born. I've gone through different times where there were different ep epidemics, but people are people, and I've met wonderful people, and I met people that aren't that wonderful. Yeah. And you have to know 
how to handle different people that you meet. We talked to her about jobs she's had in the past. During the wartime, I worked in an assembly line, putting in things to send the soldiers. We'd wow. send them care packages. And then I worked at a place where service men went. And there was one fellow there that was very lonely. Mm -hmm. I told him I was married, but I'd like to be his friend. And I had it in my mind that I fix him up with one of my single girlfriends. Nice. I did, but it didn't work out. Oh, no. I tried. We, we're trying for him, and it's just not working. It's just mm -hmm. not working. Any advice for High him? standards. Any advice? You have to go places where there are girls. It, right. Oh, yeah. He, he doesn't. He was in Provincetown. Yeah. He There's doesn't. no girls there. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think you'll have any trouble. The girls no. will Not. go after you if you no. don't go after them. It's almost them. annoying, yeah. Have you Maybe. noticed uh, how gross his ears look? Oh, no. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's not that noticeable yeah, to the no. common eye. So, like, if, if you compare them to mine, no. you have some nice earrings. Men were kind of weird school. for a man, right? The men of the eye knew when I would never, never yeah. wore them. And we talked to her about Massachusetts. I think Massachusetts is terrific. It's been my home, and I've been happy here. Does it look like we fit in? We can't fit in with everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. We saw the Plymouth Rock. Oh, that's good. It wasn't yeah. that big. It was a small rock. Yeah, yeah. About the size it of a big dude to do about it. But what we were most curious to know is what the 4th of July meant to her. As we had seen that it can mean many different things. Friggin' uh, fireworks. Especially, Especially when so the girls bad. come to the ice cream truck and we have a baby. Those are the real yeah, fireworks. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> to different people. You meet seafood and fudge and see drag shows and singers and Broadway and comedian. I mean, it's really great. Even amongst the small sample size of white people we met in Charlestown. For me, I was born in a communist country, the worst, the worst in Russia and China at the time. And I'm an immigrant, and this is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom, everything freedom. If we didn't beat the British, we'd all be choking like this now. <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> but, uh, this country got freedom because of it. But what would it mean to a woman who has lived through 102 Independence Days? We were eager to find out. When I got married, we would have 4th of July get-togethers on the street. And we'd have games. We had a spoon race where we'd have an egg in a spoon. Yeah. It was a lot of fun on 4th of July. Mm -hmm. And do you think about the freedom aspect at all? I really don't. Okay. I gotta be. I gotta be honest. Someone with over a century of Fourth of Julys under their belt has to know what they're talking about. So this year, we forgot about freedom. Put an egg in a spoon oh, yeah. and run. And stole a page from my grandma's book. And eggs from the second floor refrigerator of the nursing home. As for the spoons, there's always a few laying around on the beaches in Massachusetts. This is an That aspect, KB gonna have that. And I'm grateful for so much. My Guess what? It's my circus country. time. What <laughs> <laughs> sucks. This thing is a fucking addictive. We just 